Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight. The Prime Minister addresses a recent trip to Brussels, Belgium. The non-profit organization bill faces further delays. News is brought to you by Alive. Welcome to Our News and thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. The morning after his return from a trip to Brussels, Belgium, where he met with high-ranking officials of the European Commission, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis responding to those questioning his reasons for making the trip. Jared Hicks tells us more. Many people have questioned why I went. But I, I think me going shows our commitment to the financial sector. Speaking to reporters after the opening of the 28th Bahamas Business Outlook, Minister defended a recent trip to Brussels, Belgium, where he met with high-ranking officials of the European Commission. His trip follows visits to the European Union by other high-ranking Bahamian officials as the EU seeks to clamp down on tax evasion by its own citizens. The Bahamas was listed as a non-cooperative jurisdiction for tax purposes or blacklisted by the EU last May. The country was removed from that list less than two weeks later and placed on a grey list. However, the Netherlands listed the Bahamas as a no or low tax jurisdiction at the beginning of the year. And with the EU set to meet on the Bahamas' position next week, Minister says he's optimistic. We had uh, excellent uh, discussion, interactions. Uh, the Attorney General was able to clarify a few concerns that they may have had. And uh, all in all, uh, they recommended or uh, stated that these types of dialogue and communication now, members of the opposition criticized the Prime Minister for going on that trip, saying that he didn't meet with anybody who's on the level of a Prime Minister. Well, here's how the Minister responded to that criticism. I don't work with them. They're looking to get my job. I don't work with them. Joining Minnis in Belgium was Attorney General Carl Bethel, Chief Operating Officer of the Prime Minister's Deliverables Unit, Vianna Gardner, Advisor to the Minister of Finance, Stephen Coakley Wells, CEO of the Keystone Group, Wendy Warren. Michael Patton, partner at offshore and commercial law firm Lennox Patton, and a team of advisors. Minister was asked when a promised report into ministerial travel would be released, prompting him to guarantee that his entire cabinet has stayed within his travel budget. We are very transparent. Um, when I travel, you all know exactly who accompany me. So you basically know the cost. But uh, the ministers, likewise, what I can say is that travel is a budgeted item. Every minister has stayed within the budgeted item. So if you review the budget, you would know how much has been allotted for travel. And therefore, you can automatically conclude that we have spent less than what is there. Pressed on a date that the travel report will be released, minister said this. We can give more, but if you look at the, the monies allotted for travel, you automatically know what the government is spending. It's there in black and white. Reporting for our news, I'm Jared Higgs. Right, thanks, Jared. Well, just over a week after Acting Chief Justice Vera Watkins blasted her temporary appointment as futile, the Prime Minister told reporters that an appointment will be coming very soon. Chief Justice Stephen Isaacs acted in the post for eight months before being officially sworn in last August. He died just two weeks later. Here was the Prime Minister's response when asked by our news when the post would be filled this time around. Very soon. Well, arguments in the no-case submission in the Frank Smith bribery and extortion case continued in the magistrate's court today after Chief Magistrate Joyanne Ferguson-Pratt ruled against the defense's most recent calls to immediately end the case. Jasmine Brown has the latest. Proceedings in court on Thursday resumed after a cliffhanger on Wednesday evening that ended with Smith's lead defense attorney Keith Knight QC calling for the immediate acquittal of his client. His calls came after lead prosecutor Edward Jenkins QC conceded that their case centers on the issue of whether Smith actually met his accuser, cleaning company owner Barbara Hanna, before she was awarded a $516,000 annual contract to clean the critical care unit of Princess Margaret Hospital. But during the proceedings on Thursday morning, Jenkins said his statements were a grammatical slip and that the date of the meeting would not impact the extortion charges. Chief Magistrate Joanne Ferguson Pratt told the court that she decided not to end the matter at this point as she wanted to ensure the case is fully ventilated. 
Smith, who was a former PLP senator and public hospitals authority chairman, is accused of extorting $60,000 from Hannah after prosecutors allege he assisted her in obtaining a contract to clean the critical care unit of Princess Margaret Hospital while he served as chairman of the public hospitals authority. As he argued against the no-case submission, Jenkins continued to defend his client and her credibility. Jenkins told the court that the defense has put out a conspiracy theory to pervert the course of justice by insinuating there was political persuasion. He pointed to the defense's claim that it was inappropriate for Minister of National Security Marvin Dames to meet Hannah in his constituency office to hear her complaints. Jenkins contended there was nothing wrong with meeting in a public place. He also refuted the prosecution's claim that Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands acted improperly when he awarded Hannah a $1.8 million cleaning contract four months after Smith had been charged in a magistrate's court. While Jenkins insisted it could have been handled better, he said it was done sufficiently and transparently as he insisted Dr. Sands went through all the right procedures to award the contract. As for Hannah's strength as a witness, Jenkins admitted Hannah was a difficult witness who became cross and frustrated easily. He said when looking at her testimony as a whole, it was clear she became frustrated about issues that she thought were intrusive to her private life, like questions about her mortgage with Finco. Jenkins also said Hannah has not sought to hide behind or disguise anything as he insisted her testimony has been unwavering despite the fact that he says she gets anxious about dates. The matter is expected to resume on Friday. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. All right, thanks, Jasmine. While the nonprofit organization's bill is still in the consultation phase, according to the Attorney General, who told members of the Senate that the bill still needs more tweaking before he can say he is pleased with it. Georgia Bain has that. In the short Senate meeting Thursday morning, Attorney General Carl Bethel said that he's not comfortable presenting the bill in its current state and said that a few more elements have to be added, such as a supervisory board. I'm not satisfied that the draft that we have at the moment adequately captures what I would wish to see and tender and proffer to civil society and the religious community as being an acceptable compromise that will be workable on their behalf, but which will also secure the interests of the, the government in having an appropriate regulatory and supervisory framework. According to Bethel, the bill is in need of a light touch to add regulatory framework that should create a framework of compliance, which will be needed to ensure that the organizations are abiding by the rules. The idea is to, to craft within this bill a light touch regulatory framework that merely creates a framework of compliance where through a process of very minimal registration either national agencies, organizations, federations, districts, grand or subordinate bodies will be able to register for themselves and their subordinate entities. Bethel added that the bill is in need of a supervisory board and suggested the Christian Council. And that supervisory agency, probably the Christian Council, will then be able to certify that they are compliant. And in this way, we would reduce, and the idea is to reduce the administrative burden on all civil society actors, whether it's sports federations, religious institutions, charitable um, um, organizations, etc. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgie O'Bain. Thanks, Giorgio. The Oban Energy's deal, the government's decision to buy the Grand Lucayan Resort, and the 60% increase in value-added tax topped the long list of offenses that Deputy Leader of the PLP, Chester Cooper, pegged against the Minnesota administration. Last night at the party's majority rule rally, the Zuma and Ragged Island MP called for the Minnesota administration to be fired. Julian Gray has more. Deputy leader of the Progressive Liberal Party, Chester Cooper, gave a scathing critique of the Minnis administration. This as he built his case as to why Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis and his entire government should be booted out. The probation is over. The honeymoon been over. This ain't making no sense. We ask Minnis to resign. We ask them to go on his own free will. They will not leave. So we have no choice but to put a vote of no confidence in this Prime Minister. This cabinet must be disbanded. The House should be dissolved 
and we need an opportunity to fire them all. Back in March 2018, Cooper called on the Prime Minister to resign based on the swirling controversy surrounding the Oban energy steal. Last night, he pegged that and nine other missteps as the reason why the FNM government must be fired. Cooper said the country should not think twice about kicking the government to the curb, listing the recent claims about contracts being taken from bus drivers and garbage collectors as top offenses. For firing and sending home thousands of workers across our Bahamas, menace and the AFRM must be fired. They victimized bus drivers in Freeport, garbage collectors in Nassau. For this, they didn't think twice, and therefore, we must not think twice. We must fire them. Reason number eight for doctors and nurses and teachers and taxi drivers and just the general state of our country. Nobody is happy anymore. Nobody is happy with this government. We need to fire them before they do more damage to our country. The crowd of about 100 party supporters cheered and shouted as Cooper continued his case. No telling if this vote of no confidence will be placed before Parliament, but Cooper rallied the crowd to take the call directly to the government. And when you see them, you tell them, you're fired. You look them in the eye and you tell them, you're fired for lying to the Bahamian people. You're fired. Show them that no lie in this Bahama land will last forever. And so, for Oban, you're fired. For increasing VAT, for BPL, for Grand Lucayan Hotel, for Bahama, for mismanaging the economy, for victimizing Bahamians, because everybody's on strike. You're fired. Reporting for our news, I'm Jillian Gray. All right, thanks, Jillian. Still to come, will the Prime Minister meet with Managers Union for the Grand Lucayne Resort? Plus, Social Services Minister Frankie Campbell issuing a public apology. Stay tuned.